Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to the latest chapter of Oz Magica, taken from the subreddit HFY. All the relevant links are down below, and please like, comment, and subscribe like any good minion of the algorithm would do. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Chapter 11 So, um, what are we gonna do, Gojo? We're literally stuck here. I gesture madly in the direction of my ire, as I sat on the dirt, packed hard by my non-stop pacing. There lay the ruins of an entrance of a cave, or rather the rubble and dirt that now covered what remained. We'd been stuck for about a couple hours now, at first, I had the idea just to pull the rocks and shift out of the way. But that's how the dirt ended up raining down and packing it all, somehow. I swear, everything is just going to crap right now. I don't have a luck stat for a reason. Then again, I don't even know what could have possibly be used for anyway. We could always try climb out, Kojo suggested. I looked towards Kojo, who sat across from me. He gazed into one of the many trees around us. Our conversation had gotten a bit better. As it seemed, with more communication, the animal companionship skill seemed to grow. It even had passed level 10, but there wasn't a notification or obvious benefit to it. It might need something else to do that special event thing, but I'm not too sure. I have no idea why it isn't doing anything. And this is the first time I haven't received rewards for doing my dutiful surface of grinding. It scared me a bit, cause I had a thought that maybe I could only get a certain number of rewards. But that just seems ridiculous to me for some reason. I'm gonna to have to find out the specific conditions for this later on. But right now, I need to focus on my current situation. Apparently though, the situation seemed to be uh, trees. None seemed high enough, except towards the middle, where a lone, I want to say, birch? I don't know. The bark was colored in a mix of white and brown. Whatever it was, it rose significantly taller than its surroundings. The sun seemed to make the leaves shine for a moment, before movement caused the leaves to flutter around, before stealing back to the branches once more. Yeah, I don't think so, buddy. From what I can see, there's some probably giant bird up there. Well, it's either that, or there is some weird plant stuff growing on it with it. Plus, how would we even get out of this giant hole from there? It seems far away. Kojo seemed to stare more intently, as his moss bushes seemed to rise briefly. Oh, see now, yes, not good idea. Also planned on jumping down, new bodies seem more durable. Kojo, I'm not a plant like you. I don't think I can just root myself to the ground and regrow myself. Looking down, I see the remains of my regenerating leg. As of now, only the foot was left to regrow, and I could only feel a little bit hypocritical. Okay, maybe I can regrow myself, but not too good. Thought you'd be inside. Excuse me, what? Inside what, buddy? Me? Doesn't seem like have stomach anymore. No feel hunger. Assume keep in there, then pull out. Look, Kojo, I'm not saying that it's not going to work, but I am saying that you have to make sure that you can do something before you try it. You can feel like you can do something all you want, with it fading all the same. Who knows if you still have, uh, acid in there or something? Wise, we'll listen to advice. If that's wisdom to him... I don't even want to know what his common sense is like. Well, uh, what have you thought of so far? I'm kind of drawing a blank on what we could do. Kojo briefly looked towards my way, opening his mouth. Well, could dig, could wait help, could climb tree, write bird, you could stay, eat, grow plant. Something about the last one just seemed to, uh, click. That's it! I quickly stand up and head towards Kojo. Okay. So, uh, I have this spell. Ability. Whatever. It causes plants to mature and grow. I just had an idea. You're a plant. Right now, right? What do we use on you to better dig out the entrance? Kojo seemed a bit put off by the sudden influx of information. But his composure seemed to resolve. 
Could do that, yes. How fitting cave, though, barely fit an entrance before. After this, would I even any more? Is permanent. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, bud. I hadn't thought of that far ahead yet. Just latched onto it. Also, I think it might be, um, uh, most of the stuff I've grown has basically stayed at that state that I left them. Uh, I don't know if it's a time issue or what, but none have suddenly become acorns again. Grow could work, though. Hard trees can cave. Have grow part rock like water does. Yeah, but yeah. Let me grab some seeds or something. There must be another an acorn around here somewhere. I get up on my feet and begin looking for some detritus. It doesn't take long to find a few nuts I can grow, and uh, I also come across another twilight rose. Something tells me that I'll probably need it. I don't know where the feeding is coming from, but I can see how this thing might be useful. If it can flash freeze and flash fry bugs, I could probably use it as a refrigerator for food or a makeshift stove when it was raining or something. Maybe even a potion, if those exist around here. Then again, they probably do, with how magic's a thing. But I need to focus on the present, though, because the future can wait until I actually am able to get it. Now, uh, I think I'd be a bit crazy just to pluck it out in the ground. I have no idea what'll actually happen if I touch it. I could burn my hand since it's daytime, but I think I have an idea. Pushing my hand towards the flower, I slowly start to push my foot towards the plant. If it's made of magic, then it shouldn't just activate its effect. However, what am I supposed to do here to get it? Maybe I could get the seed. It'll probably be easier to carry around than the whole plant considering my leaf fanny pack isn't really too big. But how do I make it a seed? I don't exactly have pollen or anything to make it give seeds. Wait, I think I know how to game the system. Growth, Twilight Rose. With that single rose twitches slightly before the ground beneath it begins to shift. The roots grow while the rose itself grows with multiple bulbs with its thorns lengthened in size and gaining a menacing purple glow around them. Its vines begin thickening as its volume increases. Then it slows down a fair bit, but I need to keep pushing it. If I'm right, the rose bush doesn't give any noticeable change besides the thorns growing a bit more, until something begins growing out of the bulbs themselves. Little blue and red pods, some bigger, while others having mixed colors begin falling to the ground. I reach down and gently touch them. They're a little hot or cold to the touch, depending on the color, but it's more like touching an ice cube or a warm sidewalk. I pick up both sets, along with some nuts on the ground surrounding the nearby trees, back to the collapsed entrance. While walking over, I put the rose seed pods in my fanny pack, and I finally reach the entrance. Kojo is laying right beside it. Now, I have no idea where exactly I need to place these, but I think it would be alright if I just threw it in the general arc through the pile of dirt and rocks. Some could tumble down into the cracks to the bottom, and if I just grow them all ten of them at once, maybe it'll work out. Well, no time like the present. I hastily spread the nuts through my hands, sipping it out in places where I don't think I've put any. And with that done, I step back. Growth. Nuts. Leafy shoots spread out through the rock as a rumbling begins to spread. Rocks begin to crumble down as roots as thick as my leg writhe to the ground, searching for a nice place to rest. In their writhing, they would knock a few more rocks off and even burst through some, trying to find water, I'm guessing. The roots are flowing over the rocky surface of the ground before they find purchase within the softer soil out in front of the cave. The leaves begin to peek through some of the remaining rocks, as the tree's growth causes them to fall either inward or outward. As sudden as it started, it stops. The rocks seem to have been either pushed aside or ground up in the nuts unstoppable but blind search. I couldn't really tell if we were able to get straight path back into the cave, though. Sure, there was now a dark recess where the trees had been growing, but that's all I can see. 
Slowly, I walk towards it and stick my hand into it. Moment of truth, I suppose. And, like a blind man looking for his cane, I stumble into the darkness. And almost immediately fall on my face because of a goddamn rock the size of my head, stabbing my goddamn toe out of my freshly grown foot. And somehow... Dave, you okay? Yes, Kojo. Of course I'm okay. Why wouldn't I be okay with all the yelling and pain? Assume hardier than that. Just because I don't have a lasting damage from it doesn't mean I can't feel pain, Kojo. All right. But is there passage? Seems like it goes all the way through. It's just too dark to actually tell anything from outside. Okay, you go ahead. I'll catch up. What are you talking about, Kojo? Wasn't this your idea? Just push through the detritus and get over here. Doesn't seem stable. If pushed myself, might get more collapsing on me. Yeah, suppose that's true. Maybe I could do something in here. Would appreciate, but wouldn't like it if you took all day. Is, uh, is that sarcasm I hear? Didn't figure you were very much for that, Kojo. But the problem still remains. How am I going to keep this cave from collapsing in on Kojo when he tries to go through? I could just put in more nuts here and there and have them grow to the ceiling. But the problem with that is that they only seem to like soft surfaces to grow on. Might not be able to grow any at all to support them through the passage. Hmm. I have an idea, Kojo, though I gotta tell you, I don't know if you might get hurt by this, so I suggest backing up a bit. Hurt? Yeah. It's gonna be some magic, maybe. Oh, rituals needed for clear more. Don't know why I didn't in the first place rather than this growth. There's a reason for that, Kojo. I won't tell you why, but I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. For all I know, anything I try to do will get me blown up or something. So, without further ado, I reach inside myself once more. Sure, I could stand still while this is happening, or even close my eyes. But the Kundalini is active almost all the time now, so I might as well pace while I shape my manner within me. I, um, I'm gonna be honest here. This is new territory. I could try maybe divining the secrets about why different symbols do different things. But right now, I don't necessarily have all the time in the world. Someone's counting on me to be quick with this. So, I have to think here. Growth has its limitations when the plant is growing isn't made for the environment it's in. I also don't really see much else around me with my limited dark vision. So I can't just block a cave mushroom. I could try to another magical construct or something. I at least know the magical prosthetic spell now, so if I just make a giant version of it, I'd have legs supporting the top of the cave. But I don't really know what the spell's components actually are. I can't tell if I activate it with the intention of big or something. I might just have a giant leg coming out of me. It'd be much safer just to try something different. I could try and make my own spell, like with how I made the magic spear spell. Then again, all I could remember feeling was raw intent and fumbling around. I don't know if what I was doing was wrong or not, but I'd rather not experiment before I'm actually able to talk to somebody with experience regarding this. What does that leave me with, though? If I push my focus towards the one thing I haven't really acknowledged the entire time since I awoke, the grey affinity. Its haziness almost invokes a sense of dread that I haven't really felt before. If I'm right, then if I just put raw mana or something through this, I'll get a basic spell that has the affinity belonging to decay. Now, uh, I don't actually know what's going to happen when I put it through this. If I do it right, I can just destroy some of the plants covering the entrance. Hopefully, what I get isn't an area of effect spell. Otherwise... I might hit Kojo with it by accident. I don't think I can handle killing a friend on accident. Again. Okay, enough dwelling on the past or worrying about consequences. Just, uh, just do it. With those, uh, mediocre, I suppose, words of encouragement, I start to work. I compress my manner down as much as I can. I notice that I am able to do a bit more than I could the last time. 
but that's probably the steadily increasing amount of skill levels that I should be getting. I focus on directing that energy flow towards the screen. There's a bit of resistance as the strand presses against it, but then it busts through. With that, I could feel something flowing through my hands. I look down to see what changed, only to be slightly startled. My hands have um, dust flaking off of them as an aura of grey seems to seep out from them. Huh, that's kind of cool. I almost forgot I could actually see manatypes. I wave my hands around, my eyes naturally drawn to my skin slowly falling off before being replaced. For using a decaying touch without knowing the spell, you have earned plus one int, plus one whiz, and the spell decay touch. So, uh, that's what it's called. Judging by the name, maybe this could help. I need to see what the spell has. Help, decay touch. Decaying touch, level 20, 10 out of 100%, cost 20 mana. This spell is a taboo amongst many self-respecting mages. Why would you force someone to undergo rapid decay when you could far easier just throw acid or a fireball towards them? Those are at least much easier to heal than this. In fact, healing doesn't really seem to do much help, unless it's high grade or has the holy aspect towards it. With this spell, you are able to hasten the decay of anything that you touch, whether that be alive or dead. The higher the level, the faster your decay can affect the object you're touching. Morning. The higher the level decaying touching gets, the more negative feedback you will receive. This translates into negative health regeneration and possible loss of limbs. Due to affinity, life, you have cancelled out a low-level version of feedback, as well as half the damage it can do. Due to the affinity decay, you have automatically learned the 20th level of the spell, as well as doubled the damage it can do. Max attack, 220 per second. Feedback, zero. This, um, this is the first time a spell has an attack attached to it, isn't it? Also, apparently the most information I've gotten out of a spell before. Kind of concerning, given that it actually has a high amount of MP I need to use. Then again, my affinity didn't make the spell free to use like the other spells I have. I mean, the only thing I'm using MP towards is the last half of my foot, so I can use this to be better at combat. Wait, if it's a touch-based spell, could I, uh, channel it through my magic spear? Something to test later. From the description, I think I can use it on rocks, as well as trees, maybe. I mean, it says anything I touch, so it should work. I lean closer, I just brush my hands against the rocks. They, uh, I don't really know how to describe what exactly is happening here, but uh, it seems to me like the rocks are just breaking apart into dust. Ah, neat. Just gotta cover my mouth so I don't breathe any of it in. So I could just uh, keep going through the entire cave in, I suppose. I have this on, and I'm only losing about 5 MP a second. I'd have to use this fast, but it's doable. I wave my hand wildly through the entrance, clawing away at heaps of rock and detritus. Then I finally reach the trees. I don't really know what kind of thing would happen if I touch it, so I'm just not going to. There's always time to find out later. So clearing out the rest of the rock debris, the sunshine came through the entrance, revealing my form, covered in dust. Coughing, I managed to cancel decaying touch before yelling out of the cave. Kojo, it's safe. <coughs> it's safe to come back. I watched the woods before noticing something important. Kojo did not leave. He was there the entire time. Somehow, his moss fur actually changes color. He had somehow just, uh, crouched low to the floor and became the ground. I don't know if he somehow merged with it, or if it's just the color swamp. But whatever he's doing, it's damn impressive. Kojo, dude, that's awesome! How are you even doing that? Tried to become forest like I was saying earlier. Figured should try it while you're busy. Well, your natural stealth is off the charts. I don't think you need practice, unless you want to move while you're like that. Hmm, reasonable. So, spell worked, I assume. 
Huh? Oh, yeah. Did. Was able to bust through the rocks, no problem. Why didn't you do it in the first place? Didn't know I could do it till now, I guess. Fair enough. So, um, ready to leave this place? Sure. No time like present. Oh, idioms are getting across now. That's good. What? Nothing, buddy. Nothing important. I pat him on the back as I head back into the darkness of the cave. Gojo walking right behind me. I may not know what could be beyond or what dangers might lurk in the shadows, but I know one thing. If I'm able to conjure magic weapons, beat up mind flayers, and heal my goddamn friend from the brink of death, I don't care what happens. No matter what, I think we'll be all right. End of chapter. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.